Hello everyone, uh, this is Ryan Salins, Diversity Trainer and Consultant, and today I decided to do a blog on uh, what to do in a workplace transition. Uh, someone sent me a request to, to write about it, but I thought maybe it would be more interesting for me to talk about it here. Uh, I have worked with some companies on working with their transgender employees who are making a transition, and so if you are one of those individuals that are getting ready to talk with their organization or company, and to take a big step in your life, uh, my very first suggestion when thinking about transitioning at your workplace uh, is first going to your non-discrimination policy uh, within your organization and seeing if they have listed in that policy gender identity or better yet, gender identity and expression. All right? If they have that listed in a non-discrimination policy, then that's a bonus for you uh, because that's uh, one area that you don't have to worry about them potentially just fire you for no reason because of your transition because that is then considered a protected class at your organization or company. Second, after looking at your non-discrimination policy, um, if you trust your supervisor, I would recommend going and talking to them personally about, about what you're going to be doing. Um, if you do not trust your supervisor, then it's best to go to your human resource department and talk to someone there. It's going to be best over time that your supervisor is brought in um, on this process, uh, but if you do not have that trust built yet and you know that gender identity and uh, expression are a protected class, HR is the first place to go. All right. When you're working with them, they may say, well, we need to, what should we do? Uh, if you Google workplace transition, you're going to find a lot of different resources on, online. Uh, the Human Rights Campaign has some materials. I generally do not um, promote HRC materials due to what's been happening with the Employment Non-Discrimination Act, both in 1979 and in the past couple years where they're trying to get gender or trying to compromise. Uh, by taking gender identity out of INDA and having sexual orientation go through. However, they do have materials. Uh, you can look at Lambda Legal. Um, I'm a huge fan of Lambda Legal and their services that they have there. Uh, you can also look at the National Center for Transgender Equality um, or the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force. Those are all wonderful organizations and they may have some really good resources for you. If you are starting to do this transition and you feel like you are being discriminated against, maybe that would be a good time to actually contact Lambda Legal to see what advice that they have for you uh, in regard to your transition. If you're moving forward and you've met with your HR department and you've talked with your supervisor and they're trying to figure out, well, what's the best next step, um, they may suggest maybe we should write an open letter to the company. Uh, you have to ask yourself if you're comfortable with that. All right. It may be that you don't want everybody to know. Maybe you just want people that you are uh, having direct contact with to know about the transition. In that case, talk to them about it. Say, well, I'm comfortable with doing a letter if it's to these individuals, or can we do a staff sensitivity training? Typically what I do is I go in and do a staff sensitivity training with the people that are directly uh, in contact with you and your organization. All right. Uh, and that would be announcing the process. Sometimes people prefer not to be there when other employees uh, and coworkers learn about your transition. Uh, other individuals want to be there and want to be able to ask, answer questions. Throughout this whole time, it's important for you to really listen to, to yourself and what you're most comfortable with, uh, with the support of your organization or company. Um, so then after you, you come out to those individuals, uh, talk to them about, okay, this is the name that I'm going to be using. Uh, this is how I'm going to present. I'm ready to come to work this time uh, presenting this way. I expect that when I do make this transition, I'm allowed to use the restroom with my gender identity uh, that I identify with, which again is protected underneath uh, the non-discrimination clause that they have in gender identity expression there. And also that you plan to dress in an attire that you're comfortable in. All right. That's when you ask, can I have my payroll changed? If you have name IDs and badges, can I please have my badge changed to the name that I go by now? Uh, typically, you're more likely to be able to have them work with you on that if you have the legal name change done, so you have your court order, and so everything goes through that way. Other times, they may issue 
you a new batch without the legal name change, but your payroll has to stay with your name until it's legally changed due to uh, tax laws and following your social security number and all those things. So these are things to get you started. If you have questions um, about what to do next, if I didn't cover everything, please email me, rsalans, S-A-L-L-A-N-S, at gmail.com, and I can talk to you more about the workplace transition. Or if you have other questions you'd like me to do videos on in regard to that, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. Thanks, everyone. Bye.